How's it, everybody? Welcome to Exponential Conversations, where we are bringing you the best thought leadership, innovation, and technology from around the globe. We are fortunate enough today to have with us in studio Dr. Merit Moore, who is a hat trick achiever. Merit is a quantum physicist and ballerina, also delving into the astronaut sector. As an accomplished ballet dancer, she programmed robots to dance alongside her in her, in her Instagram videos that have yielded millions and millions of views. Merit is currently pushing a career as an astronaut. She's been cited in Forbes 30 Under 30 in a children's storybook and has been featured in Time and Vogue magazines. She explores the future of AI, machine learning, specifically with dance, and welcomes all forms of collaboration fusing, fusing dance, physics, and tech. With that, uh, welcome, Merit. Great to have you on the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. And uh, Mer Merit, I mean, do you want to tell us a bit about um, what inspired you to want to do all these incredible things? You know, not many people want to go out and, uh, you know, be a, be a professional ballet dancer. That takes a huge amount of discipline. Then to, you know, be a scientist and a quantum physicist is, is quite a daunting field because, it, you know, it's, uh, there, there's so much to go into there. And then, you know, to be, want to be an astronaut as well. So, you know, what motivated you, inspired you to, to want to do all these things? I was just the feeling of it. So I started dancing when I was 13 and reluctantly, like my mom took me to a dance class. Um, it was kind of a bribe. It was like, if I did a month of ballet, I could do karate or something else afterwards. But she wanted to fix my posture. She's like, you're walking like your Korean grandfather. Like we need to fix this now. And so I went to my first dance class and then, um, I I just fell in love with the music and the movement and I just that was something that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And for physics, then it was through, um, I think it, I'll say like my father would take my sister and I on the balcony and we'd stare at the stars and we'd do these constellation mappings and he would then um, ask us like, do you think there's life out there? Do you think that, you know, there's, what is dark energy? What's dark matter? Like, were there multiple big bangs? Was there just one? And so those questions would be like churning in my head. I'm like, I don't know, what are these? I want to learn them. And so I think, um, and I always loved math. And so then when I had the opportunity to take a physics class, in my senior year of high school, I just fell in love. And, and the hard thing was that everyone said that I couldn't do both. And so I was trying to find ways that I could, um, yeah, well, I mean, I tried to quit dance a number of times. And it just kept dragging me back. And, and then at the end of 10 years, over a decade of pursuing both, I think I just came to the realization, I was like, why can't I do both? Like I've now, I've now done Harvard, I've now done Zerk Ballet, Boston Ballet, English National, Norwegian National, like, um, and my Oxford PhD, like I was like, you know what? I keep hiding that I'm doing both. And I was like, you know what? I think I've done this over a decade. Like, why not? Why can't this be more of the norm? And then, yeah, this astronaut stuff is new. I want to go to the moon. <laughs> so interesting. I mean, uh, what, what's so amazing is that if you, if you think about it, you had really great mentors and educators that helped you know yeah. uh, inspire yeah. you and uh, and help you learn about these different fields, which you know. I'm you know. so grateful to the mentors. Like I would never. There have been so many guardian angels throughout my life, like so many, and so many incredible mentors that I just um, I owe everything to. Um, would really put their heart and soul into guiding me and. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm very grateful. That's one of the things I think I'm most grateful for. And then, I mean, and also I love that the fact that you didn't want to hide each of these incredible uh, fields or these, these, uh, these things you were practicing. What made you want to merge the two? When did you decide to merge and uh, converge dance and physics and science? It took a while. For a long time, I was avoiding merging the two. Um, because I really cared about excellence and I was worried that if I merged art and science together that the quality would go down. Um, and I think that often art is used to communicate science, but 
I think that didn't interest me so much. Whereas now where I'm finding my passion is, is finding the ways that science can push the arts and human creativity, but also where arts can come in and really push the science in research and in the actual, um, you know, discoveries that are possible from, from an arts perspective by, by the way that it asks, uh, like forces us to ask different questions um, that don't happen in the lab because there's so many, so much pressure to like publish papers and like, I think people go in this like tunnel vision and, and so the creativity is lost um, and the potential for major breakthroughs. So in combining the two, what I've really cared about is like, am I enhancing, making the art more excellent you know, not dumbing it down in order to try to explain something. And is the science push getting pushed forward by, you know, collaborating with the roboticists around the world, whether at Harvard or India or, you know, there are multiple projects I'm running. But um, yeah, in that sense, that's, yeah, that's why I've like enjoyed now merging the two. And it's, it's kind of, yeah. I, I was always a little bit pessimistic about it, but uh, now, now, now I'm optimistic about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's 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 such a great way of advancing each field because when the the different fields converge, they they accelerate the advancement of one another in a huge way. Yeah, so you're accelerating science and you're accelerating creativity, and we're seeing this explosion of creativity with in the, coming to the world being enabled by different technologies. And even, I mean, what you made me think about is NFTs and blockchain technology, how that's enabling artists to want to stay in art because now you have a way of having a new type of ownership in that mm -hmm. art. So yeah. Parents of the past would be, you know, maybe they would want their kids to go into art if they were an artist or they were creative, but it wasn't because they wanted them to be you know, this hugely successful uh, finance person, you know, traditionally the roles of uh, finance or law or, or doctors or things like that were always seen as these stable roles because the arts were always a bit volatile and there wasn't a you know, steady income. Now yeah. with this enablement of technology, artists are going to be able to, you know, follow their passions and be creative and converge with these different technologies. Um, and the jobs that were, I think, more profitable before have are the ones that are, have more danger of being automated, um, you know, being run by like computers and robots and stuff. And so I really do think that creativity is now the most important thing that needs to be focused on in education, right? Like uh, there's so much focus on answering questions and memorizing regurgitating facts. And it's just like, Dude, no one's going to be able to compete with Siri and Alexa. Like, that's just yeah. it's so silly. But, and I found after so many years of education, uh, you know, undergrad and then the PhD, um, was that even coming out of it, I was like, you know what? No one's really taught me how to ask good questions. You know, I'm always for, forced to answer questions. But, like, for the future, and I think for any major breakthrough, it's like that ability to ask good questions. It's what's going to be, yeah, the the um, most important thing for humans in the future to be successful. Absolutely, the essential skill of the future is creativity for sure. At Singularity, we like to do this uh, workshop we call Question Storming, mm. it's about yeah. trying to find the right questions. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Jason Dunn. Have you heard of Jason Dunn? Uh, um, so Jason Dunn, he, he went to Singularity and in 2012, he and his team were trying to work out how do they move goods from Earth to space in a more cost-effective way. And Jason said, why do we need to move the goods at all? Maybe we're asking the wrong question. Why don't we just make them in space? And he created Made in Space, which is a zero-gravity 3D printing company that's become you know one of the main... Uh, uh, providers of materials in space on the ISS mm -hmm. station. They're on their third generation uh, zero gravity 3D printers. Wow. It's yeah. all about the question, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I love so the question story. Oh, let's talk more about that. No, it's a huge <laughs> Like I just did this uh, hackathon for Kia um, 
talking about how do you inspire more creativity in kids and and that was that was the my the pitch um that uh we went with was just like it's all about the questions yeah because the machines will be doing more and more of the mundane tasks for us yeah we need to come up with ever more creative solutions to problems we don't even know yet so I want to move on to a little bit more about your creativity on social. So, okay. you know, you've, you've got millions and millions of views on uh, on Instagram through your various v- videos. Uh, what, what inspired you to start wanting to do that and, and, and program these robots and dance with robots? It was this pandemic, to be honest. Like, I'd um, previously I'd been dancing with a professional ballet company. I was dancing with Norwegian National Ballet. Um, and there it's when the idea kind of got triggered where uh, a friend of a friend works with robots and I was like can I come and hang out with the robot like after um, uh, performances and like in between rehearsals and they let me do that and then I was uh, invited as uh, artist in residence at Harvard Art Lab where I was given the space to start research what that movement might look like with an industrial robotic arm and um and then the pandemic hit that was yeah i was artist in residence from january to february and then march everything was shut and all my dance gigs got canceled um all types of training there was you know it was very devastating for arts world in particular dance world and i was just i just remember being like okay what's the what you know there's, there's a solution to something like what's the silver line? Like, what am I going to, you know, it's not, you know, with every challenge, there's always something that you can, can make that comes out of it. And so I was thinking, I was like, hmm, weird that I was just dancing though with a robot. Robots can't get COVID. So uh, hmm, maybe we'll try to persuade the robot company to lend me a robot. Um, and that took a couple months of me just like LinkedIn messaging every single person just being like you want to lend a robot to a dancer um and they lent it to me at first for just two weeks and that's when I started creating the dances um and it was it was for social media like it's fun and it was like to Bruno Mars and Billie Eilish and just a I was just exploring and experimenting and and uh and then I was, they continued the loan um, for four weeks and then for a couple months. And so I was able to really get my teeth in it, which I never would have done if the pandemic existed because I'm constantly traveling and I, you know, my work takes me everywhere. So having months at a time where I was just, I mean, I made it a routine though. I was like, look, Mary, you're going to wake up, you're going to train, go work with the robots, create content. And then, you know, who knows what's going to happen with it at all? Like, I had no idea. Um, and so months later, now it's six months later, it's, it's been amazing because then um, it was just 15 second long videos and then America's Got Talent founded. And so I just performed live in front of like Simon Cowell and Heidi Klum and like all of those. Um, and so we'll just, it's been, yeah, and, and I think, not like artistically it's been really fun and challenging but also i've got to work with like amazing people at harvard like um jose garcia is like the most amazing um like person to work with in terms of human machine interaction we've worked on thing making things real-time interactive and roboticists in india have like figured out way we had a gallery in london and like research wise, it's been so, oh, working with AI, like seeing, you know, if I'm in a motion capture suit and you can train AI, then can you map that to a robot? Like in terms of research, it's been so much fun. And then in terms of artistry and artistically, it's been so much fun. So it's just been a year. It's just been a year. I can't believe it. And that's what's so amazing. It's just such a great example of, um, going out there and and making things happen even when you're you know you're put in a tough situation because it must have been really hard i'm sure uh you know everything getting like all of us went through it yeah. and we saw certain people you know rose up and and, and you know and said i'm not going to just wait and do nothing but i'm actually going to make a change and you made an incredible change 
and you've actually pushed the world a bit further. So I want to just commend you on, on doing that. I think it's really remarkable. Thank you. And uh, I mean, how does it work? Like, how do you actually program the robots? Like, do you have to do the move and then program? How does that part work? Yeah, I think it, uh, it, it depends on the projects because some are interactive. But for the stuff that's on social media, it's um, I, I think I start off with finding a song or something like, yeah, a style that I want to try. Like I've done like Michael Jackson and uh, salsa and, uh, you know, just lyrical or hip hop. Um, so I'll find a song and then it's uh, figuring out, sometimes I'll start with myself, like choreographing a dance on myself and then seeing how I can make the robot kind of mimic my movements. Um, or I'll play around with the robot and then see how my body can morph to kind of coincide with the robot's movements. And so um, in that sense, it kind of changes. The, the hard part in it is getting the timing right. Um, artist, like the artistry of it, the, cause you want some things to be long and then you want to speed it up and like. Um, the robots are never out of time, huh? <laughs> I can just imagine it's like, Mary, you screwed up again. Like, really? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, exactly. coffee, it's you um, but it's, it's the timing of it. So like a 15 second video would often take me seven hours from beginning to end to get the final video. If not more, like, like some of the video, you know, like it just, sometimes it, you have a great idea and sometimes it works. Um, and then sometimes it just kind of like, you're like, oh, that didn't work. You know, and you have to bin some things, um, which is always sad because you're like, oh, I just spent so much time on this and it's just like not working. Um, or, yeah. So, yeah, that's been the adventure with that one. No, it's fascinating. And uh, we're so excited to hopefully be seeing you at the Singularity South Africa Summit yeah. in October. That'd be amazing. Um, right now, it's it's been 15 second um, videos. Um, don't reveal yet. We're going to keep it a surprise for the audience. Okay. Uh, yeah, but, but it's just like the scaling of it. You know, then for America's Got Talent, it was like a minute and a half, and then you know, then I'm really having to dance. Um, and so it's just like scaling things up and and making it, uh, yeah, bigger and better. And and yeah, live it's fun. We're super excited. And um, we've just got a bit of time left. I want to quickly touch on some of your quantum physicist uh, adventures mm -hmm. that you've been working on. And um, what about your, uh, if you could just tell us a little bit about um, you, what you're working on at Oxford or what you were working on at Oxford around photon detection. And what is that? And what were some of your big challenges there? Yeah, so for my PhD, Oh, sorry, maybe just to take a step back, what is quantum yeah. physics, just for the audience, so that uh, if you could explain that very briefly. Yeah. So quantum physics is exploring what happens at a very small scale, like at the scale of atoms and electrons and photons, like they have these behaviors that are different from what we're used to. So at that very small scale, you'll get things that have superposition, like it can be a, like a photon can be act as a wave, and light at the same time until you measure it and then it's one or the other and then um you get entanglement where you can get uh particles that are entangled and and so that no matter how far away they are um one action an action on one will instantly affect the action on the other and so these just like these bizarre phenomena that are like so cool and you you actually see it in the lab like you do the experiments and you're like wow like every day i'm like this is so cool um and yeah so uh in undergrad at harvard i was investigating i was more in condensed matter and so i was exploring myron fermions and um and so that was looking at like tiny having like tiny nanowires that were shipped in from copenhagen and you know i'd put electrodes on that and that was really cool and then for my phd i wanted to go to a different field i loved quantum so i wanted to stay in quantum but um went into quantum optics which deals more with light and it's so my experiment in 
at Oxford was um, creating a, what we call the single photon source. And so I was creating pairs of entangled photons and how that worked was having a very high powered laser going into a tiny nonlinear crystal. And then there's this interaction that happens and then you get pairs of photons. And it was, it was, it was amazing. Like you, you're building it from scratch and it just went to my kid days. Like my, my favorite thing to do as a kid was like to build 3d puzzles. Like my parents would get, like I would sneak out of bed and like hide it, like hide the lights and stay up and like do the 3D puzzles. And I would get, that's what I would get in trouble for. Um, and so, you know, being in the lab until late at night, like with my listening to a book on tape and like building, you know, putting in the mirrors and putting in the laser and the crystals and that, like it was my happy place. I was like, oh, I'm a kid again, I'm building things. You know, and then we have this detector that goes to zero Kelvin. Um, like minus 273 Celsius, which is, uh, we had wires, like we snuck wires through the roof and then downstairs because the detector was downstairs. And oh, wow. it, was, it was, yeah. It's pretty incredible because, uh, you know, quantum quantum computers have to run at, at like what you're saying, at these very, very yeah. cold temperatures. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and at Oxford, you know, I think that's also something that's in, that's very fortunate is to be able to access this type of equipment. Yeah. Now, do you think in the future there'll be a lot more VR versions of this, uh, these same pieces of equipment to run these experiments? Yeah, I hope so. Like one project um, that I have been working on and what I want to be continuing is like I it's I find it so frustrating that in physics books or the you know even my way of trying to describe quantum physics, right? Where I'm like. Like something we can't experience, right? Like, but imagine at a very small scale, it acts differently. And in textbooks, you know, it'll go straight to the formulas, being like, here's the math, this is the proof, and like, take it or leave it, you know? Um, and so, been working on projects and, and delving into it more of how to make it more intuitive, right? Like, can you make you know, an experience where the quantum side of things, the bizarre um, behaviors of it become more intuitive. Um, and so, yeah, that's, you know, a project I'd worked on. I saw, I saw some other VR company, I think, saw my idea and like did a version of it. But I think we can, we can still make a better one. <laughs> I'll chat about that. We do quite a bit of VR, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's... <laughs> It'd be cool. Like, it's just, I think it's a better way of teaching it. It's just being like, how can you make it more intuitive? Because it's very unintuitive. Quantum is very unintuitive. I mean, if you think about uh, Edgar Dale might had that famous saying, I, I'm paraphrasing it because I don't know if the exact amounts, but you remember a certain amount of what you read, you remember a certain amount of what you hear, you remember a certain amount of what you see, and you remember over 80% of what you experience. Hmm. So the yeah. immersive experiences create a much better way of learning. Uh, that's yeah. faster and more um, immersive. But we just with that, we've run out of time. So I just want to end off by just asking you anything else exciting that you're working on uh, to leave us with. We'll be following your journey online. And uh, we are really uh, looking forward to seeing you at the SUSE Summit in October. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Besides yeah, um, that, what else are you working on? <laughs> the, the stuff I'm working on is is increasing the robot dances, like going to another level. Just, um, yeah, right now it's been with like one industrial robotic arm that's kind of small and scaling everything up and making it bigger. And then also just continuing my dream of, you know, going around the moon and going to space. And so whether it be like lessons and every day that, I, uh, um, that I'm doing and I, I need to get my private piloting license um, and just working on that dream of going around the moon. I want to go. <laughs> well, are we, are we, I want to join you for sure. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for that, Merit. We thank really you. appreciate your time and everything that you do. And we, will, as I said, we'll be following you uh, online. And uh, that's all we have time for today, folks. So I really hope that you enjoyed that episode. Make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube page and uh, uh, you'll get notified when we launch our next exponential conversation. Uh, have a great day and keep smiling. This was Dances with Wolves. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>